it was located in Padua, uh, it is Gattamelata. Because for him, life was more important than the sense of beauty, life, passion, okay? You will see how different are these artists there. They are good too, but very different. They work with uh, um, white ceramics. Yeah? They are called the Arobia. I don't know if you have been to Florence in Italy. If you have been to Florence, you would see that the, a lot of churches were decorated by this artist. So this is Michelangelo? No, Donatello. Donatello? Donatello. Donatello. He paved the way to Michelangelo. He was the master of Michelangelo. Oh, okay, okay. Donatello, okay. master of Michelangelo. Okay. Okay. Every time you mention, definitely I idealized. Okay. Eh? Look at Jesus' gesture. It's full of tenderness. Okay? Look at the face of the Virgin, which is great. It's mm. full of grace and sweetness. Eh? The same for John the Baptist, but here there is no need to uh, describe in a very realistic way. Eh? They just want to idealize mm. uh, to praise beauty. Okay. Okay. Just like the first Greek uh, from the classical age. I also like this masterpiece too eh? by the same Luca della Robbia. So they worked the 14th, 14th century at the same time of Donatello. Okay. What is this again? Canova? Canova. Canova, the master of the yeah. uh, Michelangelo. No, Canova, it, it is in, in the 18th, uh, 18th century. Eh? It, it is a okay. neoclassical style. Eh? Uh, it follows the way paved by the, the Greek art, by Greek artists. Okay? So, look at the, uh, the beautiful drapery. Okay? Uh, that is a truth, that is a, a, a tale. You have got a woman called Psyche. She was sleeping and uh, Cupid, or love, better say, uh, kissed her. Uh, so uh, she uh, awoke her. What is the meaning? It is the meaning that love is more prevalent than death. Uh, love is something great, magnificent. Uh, it could uh, defeat, uh, by the way, death. So they are in the nude, just like neoclassical uh, painters or neoclassical sculptors. Uh, so Canova also carved the three graces, uh, and also uh, Napoleon I covered the sister, Pauline Borghese, which you find in the statue in Rome. You can see the way he carved, you know? The long rapery, the island of New York, just like Greek artists. Mm. They were accustomed to paint, uh, to painting or carving in the New mm. Just like the Greek artist Phidias. It's, it's stupendous, you know, with a sense of beauty and idealization. Okay. It's called uh, uh, Cupid and Love. Cupid and Love, okay. okay. So this is Cupid and Love. He should you lived under the reign of Louis XIII. He had, he had two purposes. He wanted uh, to tame the Protestants uh, and he wanted to tame the nobility. Uh, he advocated the absolute monarchy. Look at the eyes. Mm -hmm. The eyes reflect his sense of duty, his sense of power, his love of his, of his country. And the love of France, one of the most important uh, characters of French history. Cardinal de Richelieu. It was before Louis the 14th, exactly 1640. Uh, who was the artist? Uh, the, it is Bernini. 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 A great one. Italiano. Yeah. Sorry, again? Michelangelo. Okay. Eh? Another master. Real is Michelangelo. His real nom in Italian is Michelangelo Buonarroti. Yeah. Michelangelo no, Buonarroti. Okay. There are two very famous statues. Hmm? They are entitled The Slaves. Here you have the dying slave, okay? Here you have the revolting slave. What is the meaning of, of both statues? You know, all his life long, Michelangelo was tortured between his love uh, mm. of pagan body eh, and the desire for reaching Christ, Christianity. So you have got the sound of Christian, eh, the body is pagan. Paganism, Christianity, mm. okay? So, we have the feeling that he wants to get rid of his own uh, body. So, look at, uh, at uh, the face. Eh? The face is turned towards the sky, which is the prevalence of the mind over the body. Okay? 
here that Said is revolting against his own body. Eh? Uh, everything is mighty, powerful, great. Eh? And it is the victory of the mind over the body. Eh? And if you also have this, the woman of the famous book called George VII, the Commission International, to uh, decorate, to create his own organization. They have a statue in Rome called Moses, who is the father of this. Great uh, So, uh, the Louvre is very proud. So, this is another masterpiece from yeah. Italian Sorry. artist, yeah. uh, Bendaluca Cellini. Yeah. About 60 okay, there is no sense of uh, balance. Eh? Everything is, 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 is exaggerated. That is the purpose of mannerism, not to be submitted to the classical, classical rules. They wanted to create with their own imagination, as they wanted. And the master of manner, mannerism in Europe was this great artist called Benvenuto Chalini. He okay. worked a lot in Florence, for example. I like it because it is different from the others, you know? The bronze is great. You call like ma master of mannerism? Mannerism, yeah, definitely. So Chalini. what is that? Like, yeah. Mannerism eh, is a, a style which uh, wanted to oppose to classical art. Classical okay, okay. art was based on some special rules. Eh? Here on the contrary, everything is inaugurated. Eh? Mm. Everything is based on details. Mm. Eh? So there is no way to be submitted to rules. They worked and they create with their own fantasy and imagination. That is mannerism. So the first painting I'm going to explain by Delacroix is the death of Sardinapalus. It was inspired by a great poem written by Lord Byron as a general story, which took place in the 6th century before Christ. Look at the Assyrian king who was named uh, Sardinapalus. Okay? Uh -huh. He had a, any kind of power. He had also a lot of women. One day, hmm, as he didn't feel like surrendering himself, huh, he asked his soldiers here to kill either uh, the horses or the women of his own realm. Okay? Here, everything is uh, sensual and luxurious. And the red used by the Lacroix huh, meant the blood shed. It was a true slaughter. Huh? Uh, he put the fire to his own palace and committed suicide. So this painting, which is great for us, was deeply criticized. You know why? Because there are too many clear colors, too much movement. Eh? And art critics were used to a different kind of painting. More classical, more, old, more balanced, more ordered. Eh? That is a true revolution in art. He was uh, in close terms with Victor Hugo, with Berlioz. Eh? There was a group of people eh, who were romantic. What is romanticism? Eh? It is uh, the pre prevalence being given to passion, to dream and passion. Mm. Eh? And romanticism is totally opposed to reason. Okay? Here, everything is based on passions, violence. Okay? That is Delacroix. The death of Delacroix shows the moment in which Dante and Virgil, the pagan legend of it, the river of air, the Styx. So this uh, painting was better accepted because the topic was more classical. Okay. As opposed to that one. Okay. So two beautiful paintings by Delacroix. Another. Next Jericho. It's a masterpiece. I'm going to explain that. Okay. Okay. okay with me. So it is taken from a, a true story which took place in Africa, in Senegal. Mm. It is in 1860. Uh, okay. There was a shipwreck, and these people took shelter on this raft that they called the Medusa. For uh, being able to paint perfectly uh, these bodies, he studied, I mean the painter studied corpses in different hospitals uh, to be more realistic. 
Mm. Okay. Here, by the way, the drawing is classical, but all the feelings are deeply romantic. I'm going to explain that, you know. These people uh, have seen a ship which mm -hmm. is going to save them. Okay? So what do, what do they embody? They embody hope. Mm -hmm. In the middle, they have seen the ship, but they are very much exhausted. So it is hope and tiredness. The man who, who is very inter interesting too is that man. He looks very indifferent. He doesn't mind about what's happening. You know why? Because he has not his son. So you have got indifference, death. So it is a display of every kind of human feelings. Uh, it is one of the most celebrated paintings in the whole world. You will see in any kind of book, okay? you will see that. It is one of the biggest paintings too. What is the More name again? One of the biggest paintings in the world. Biggest. Oh, one of the biggest. It's huge. Okay. It's absolutely huge. What is the name? The Raft of the Medusa. The Raft of the Medusa. Medusa. Okay. okay. And the painter is Jericho. Jericho. Jericho, yeah. yeah. Okay. It is uh, the people touched by the plague. Uh, Jaffa. Jaffa. Hmm. Okay. Why is it important? Because Gro was a painter, but he followed uh, Bonaparte everywhere. So he followed him to Egypt. What is important here is the fact that Napoleon Bonaparte, the same, is in the middle, okay? Very beautifully dressed. Is there? Mm. Mm. Okay? He's touching the body of his soldiers, touched mm -hmm. by the plane. There's a contrast between uh, the garments uh, of Napoleon the first, uh, by the first uh, and his soldiers, they are in the new. Okay? It's also the, the fact that uh, Gros, Gros wanted to describe the beauty uh, of exotism. Exotism. Eastern countries. Mm, Egypt. Okay, okay, okay. exotism. So, I see, yeah. The fact is that he was classical in the way uh, he was able to draw. The drawing was classical, but feelings are quickly, uh, are slowly, but normally romantic too. Eh? You know, it was a kind, a kind of photographer who imagined that instead photographing the disease. So he went on the spot. Eh? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. It is a bitter criticism of war. Okay. Here, war was praising Bonaparte. On the contrary, here, he painted the painting, but he was fed up with war. Oh, so this is kind of anti-war. Yeah, you can see the face. This yeah. is very realistic, you know? Yeah. He's absolutely frightened. Yeah. So this is by Gross too, By huh? Gross too, uh, exactly. David, yes. so he's the master of yeah. new, new classicism. New yeah. classicism. Okay, okay. So, first of all, this is also big. It is one of the biggest. Uh, with the other, uh, there are three big paintings in the room. That, the Raft of the Medusa, that one, uh, and the wedding at Cana. I mean, you see after. Okay, it's important. So, the coronation took place in Notre Dame, uh, the 2 December 1804. First of all, uh, Notre Dame. Normally, French kings were supposed to be crowned at France. But that was because uh, he was accepted. Uh, he wanted the Pope uh, to act in the ceremony. Uh, he came from Rome, and that is the Pope. Oh, pope from the Rome, okay. Pope Pius VII. Okay, here you have got Napoleon the first family. I'm going to show you. The oh. first one is the elder brother. Who is Napoleon's Joseph. elder brother? Oh, yeah, yes, elder brother Joseph Bonaparte. Joseph, Joseph Who's Bonaparte. King of Naples, King of Spain. Okay. He, he was the king of Spain, okay. Yeah. Jerome Bonaparte, King of Holland. Oh, King of Holland. Holland. Jerome Bonaparte. Okay, good. You have got three sisters. The first one was called Carolina Murat, uh, Queen of Naples. The second Queen of Naples, Carolina okay. Borghese, very famous one, because she was Napoleon's first favorite sister. He was very keen on her. Okay. Okay. And the other is Elisa. Elisa. It is the, okay. the, uh, the elder sister. Okay. Here you have got the Empress Josephine. She's kneeling down and being submitted to Napoleon the first. Okay. Here you have got his brother in law, Joachim Murat, King of Naples. King of Naples, Naples. Okay. okay. Murat. Okay. Here on the top you can see uh, Napoleon's mother, but she didn't attend the ceremony because she picked a quarrel with Josephine 
And uh -huh. for, for her, there was no way. Eh? Napoleon had to go to Rome to be uh -huh. crowned. Okay? Uh -huh. You can see that uh, the Pope is not very smiling. You know? He's not smiling. He's quite gloomy, quite sad. You know for what reason? Because Napoleon, eh? uh, he had to wait for Napoleon for more than one hour. So he was wow. despised. Okay, okay. Okay. So the Pope he, doesn't look happy yeah, because no, he has no, to work. Yes, of course. Eh? For and one you hour, can yeah. see that the, the painter painted himself here. He took part in the ceremony. He's here, David. Here you are. Oh, okay. That is a painter. Okay. It's cool. in the top corner? Yeah, yeah it is here. Yes. Yeah. Oh. He went into the painter. Yeah. He went into the the ceremony. And the painter. Painted the painter. Just like a Roman woman, okay? In the antique way. But the drawing is very classical, but feeling is very romantic. Uh, look at the way uh, her daughter is cherishing her mother. Look at the face. Uh, the face uh, of the mother. Uh, she is very happy. She's full of tenderness. Uh, Marie Antoinette didn't allow anybody to paint her, except that woman. She painted, for example, Marie Antoinette family uh, in Versailles several times. So it's what called artist Elisabeth Vigée Lebrun. Vigée Lebrun. Elisabeth Vigée Lebrun. The only uh, woman painter at the time. Normally, I'm used to saying that the Louvre houses three wonderful women. The first one we are going to see and to watch with pleasure is called the Wing Victory. What is that? That woman? It is called the Wing, the Wing Victory. Okay. Okay. It embodies uh, a victory, a naval victory. Okay. Uh, it was found. It was found by a farmer in a field. In 1863, okay. What's important that it is based on Hellenism. I'm going to explain that Hellenism. Look at the drapery. You see the drapery? Look at the movement of the knee. Before the Hellenism, there was neither movement, neither no drapery. So it's a new approach of sculpture. Okay. So it was located, according to the historians, in front of the sea. Mm. But when they found the statue, eh? she had no egg, unfortunately. Okay? Mm. No, no, Dead, no. Yeah. But she had it. It could be Minerva, goddess of wisdom. Could be. You have got three levels of explanation. The sea is uh, embodied by the pro, mm. the provision of the ship. The drapery and the feet means the land. But the most glorious point is, of course, the wings. We have got the feeling that she's on the point of flying mm. and the wing is blowing on the drapery. It is absolutely uh, uh, one of the masterpieces of the loop. Okay. The wing victory. And uh, one voice, uh, they show the symbol for their cars. The symbol of our cars. So what is the Ni name again? Wing women. Nike, Nike means victory in Greek. And okay. Nike in America yeah, have chosen this name too, which means victory. victory. At the time was Lebrun. He was very classical, he painted part of the same. Okay? And most of all, all the objects of the same you are going to, to be all to watch, yeah, belong to kings, with the 13th, with the 14th, with the 15th. So it was the main gallery in the Louvre. Oh, okay. The gallery, huh? But it was decorated before Versailles. Okay. So all the people who are actually mentioned here are the artists who work at the Louvre. They were either architects, sculptors, or painters. Okay. Germain Pilon was a very, uh, one of the most outstanding architects uh, at the time of Catherine of Medici. Renaissance. Girardon was uh, obviously one of the main uh, sculptors at the time of Louis XIV. You can see the wing, which is typical of the time. So this is the most decorated room in the Louvre. 
Look at this. Beautiful. But it ruled for uh, 50 years. Uh, it was the time of pleasure, the time of Marche, etc. Huh? But he was crowned. That is his original crown. Who was the king? Uh, Louis the Fifteenth. Who was the Fifteenth? Okay. okay. Look at, at the other thing which deserves to be seen. These, these diamonds here. Which is original. Région. It is called the Région. And the ones who paved the way to a new approach of art. The main one was Giotto. Uh, he lived in the 13th century. He was the first one to give life and realism to his paintings. And he painted in a wonderful way St. Francis of Assisi, receiving the signata. Yes, you can take that. It's very important. Giotto was the father of modern art. This is by Italian painter. He was preaching and speaking to birds. He went to see the Pope. He built a new church. He, uh, he received the matter. Uh, St. Francis of Assisi, uh, nickname, uh, he, he was called the Saint of Love. San Francisco of Assisi, okay, Italian. And Siena. And the leader was here. Uh, here, everything is based uh, on reason and perspective. Perspective mm. didn't exist before him. Mm. So he wanted to give something logical and structured to painting. It mm. is called Paolo Uccello. Yeah, he, he painted the, these battles three times, okay? The Louvre, I would say, is the major one. You have got the Northern International Gallery in London, and the third is in Florence. The Battle mm. of San Romano, okay? is one of the most important paintings, uh, uh, which paved the way to a new concept of painting. Okay. Uh, here you have got all the major Italian paintings. If you open, you know, uh, an art book, uh, mm. you will see all these paintings. Mm. And I told you, the Louvre is very proud to have so many great paintings from many, uh, I would say, well-known painters. For example, uh, before arriving at Mona Lisa, mm -hmm. I, do, I just want to show you a genuine masterpiece by Mantegna. Mantegna was very full of archaeology. He made excavations. He made research. Eh? He wanted uh, to paint uh, the most realistic and powerful crucifixion. He respected every kind of detail. Jesus is in the middle. Eh? Uh, and you've got the two robbers, this mass and cosmos. Eh? He was crucified outside the walls of the city. You would see on the top Jerusalem. Okay? Mm. Here you've got St. John, eh? his favorite apostle. Eh? So the Romans are playing dice for having Jesus grow. Eh? You have got Henry, Jesus Nazareth, Rex Yudeorum, means Jesus Nazareth, the king of the Jewish. Eh? You have got Espequier in Latin, Senatus Populus Per Romanus, means the Senate and the Roman people. Every detail is respected. As far as I'm concerned, it is the best crucifixion ever made. It's right. by Mantegna, remember? Mantegna. Antonella da Messina. You know why it was so important? He went to Flanders and he brought back the technical device of old painting. He set up in Venice. And what is great? He is absolutely Jesus' sufferings. He suffered very much, eh? but in a simple way. And on the back, I've got a simple column. In a simple way, eh? he gave power, passion to painting. Messini. Yeah. Antonella Messina. Antonella Messina. He is a great painter. Tena. Tena was the first. the magnificent painting. He turned water into wine. It was a miracle one by his own mother. Look at him. Jesus is there. Huh? And you see his mother. Okay? The painter, is, you can remember, he's called Veronese. Veronese. He was born in Verona huh? and set up in Venice. Okay? He was commissioned by some friars to paint Jesus' first miracle, okay? So, he wanted to portray the beauty, the luxury, the greatness of Venice. Eh? Here, for example, he painted himself. Ah, oh, this is... This is uh, Veronese. Ah, uh, Veronese, yeah, okay. okay. Okay? In front of him, you have got his own master, Titian. 
Here you have got another Venetian painter, Bassano, Palma Vecchio. There are four painters playing music. So okay. it's a tribute paid to Venice, and also you should bear in mind that Venice has already been prominent for music. Albinoni was from Venice, Vivaldi was from Venice, Monteverdi lived in Venice. It was a real city for music. So it's a mixture of painting and music. So there is a huge line for all of us. We waited like 25 minutes, now we're almost to there. You can see the Mona Lisa. Leonardo Rosso Cellini. Eh? He was a symbol of the Renaissance in France. He was painted in a magnificent way by Titian. Giving importance to the clothes. Uh, I told you, look at his eyes and eh? the, the, the mocking smile, which was also the mocking smile of Leonardo. Eh? Wow. So without him, he couldn't have come to France. Eh? Well, actually, by buying this painting, he saved the painting. So he brought Leonardo the to painting, France. yeah, uh, Mona Lisa. Francis well, the first. Oh, uh, Francis yeah. the first. Uh, right the, uh, the people painter is Titian. So he was the, the art. Uh, you know, normally Titian was very keen on red. Eh? Uh, Veronese was very fond of blue. They say at the time the blue of Veronese, uh, the red of Titian. Look at the red; it's magnificent. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why? Are they Why? Why so? Oh, these two painting. Okay. So the question is why there are two? Uh, that was, you know, the first one, okay? It wasn't totally completed. Eh? You can see details here eh? that you haven't found in the first one. But they are both valid, they are both original. It's the first one, eh? and you can notice that this one, this one is, is the final painting. It happens sometimes, it sometimes happens, you know? So this is the money? I know, this one is... Uh, Eduardo. Okay. So, Manet mm -hmm. okay, so, right? add the copy of the original one by Titian. Okay? Oh, okay, okay. That's okay. They yeah, put uh, both painters here. So, the, the original one by Titian, by Titian and then yeah, Manet, yeah. Manet yeah. did it again. Yeah. It's called the Venice of Milo because it was discovered in an island called Melos in Greece. Mm -hmm. Melos. Okay? So, you can see how similar. She could be to the wind victory. You have got the same drapery, okay? Mm. You see? You have got the movement of the knee, just like the wind victory. So, uh, it belonged to the Hellenistic age, namely the age of Alexander the Great, the second and the third century before Christ. But at the same time, uh, they paid tribute uh, to the beauty of classical Greece, because uh, on the back, you know, she's uh, nearly in the nude. So, uh, the sense of balance, which is incredible, uh, the sense of harmony, it, it, she definitely embodied uh, the most beautiful Venus. It's a symbol of the female beauty. Okay. Everywhere you, you can go everywhere in the world, you, are, you won't see such a, a wonderful statue of Venus. She's famous all around the world. Uh, so, you, you can have a look on the back there to see. It is classical because she's half naked. Okay, mm. when she was discovered, she was discovered uh, without any arm, but she lost she lost her arms, unfortunately. But uh, she's still remembered as a true embodiment of beauty, with the drapery, with the movement, uh, all many details. Uh, she absolutely perfect. Yeah. So this is one of the three most important art in Louvre. It's 
one of the most beautiful rooms in the Louvre. Huh? Mm -hmm. It is dedicated to the bold room, you know, because, because in the Renaissance, uh, kings and queens uh, used mm -hmm. to dance here. Oh, okay, okay. There were many celebrations here. Okay. When Henri IV uh, was stabbed to death in Paris, uh, his body uh, was put in this uh, room for one day. Molière, the famous playwright, performed, performed many plays here. Uh, it is called the Cariatid Room 